Let's play a little game. When I say go out loud, you need to spell letter by letter, jewelry is shiny. At the same time you're doing that, you need to use your finger to trace your date of birth on your hand. I'll give you a moment to give it a shot, so go ahead and pause the video here and come back when you're done. Okay, was that tough? Did it take you longer than expected? Let's try it one more time, but this time do the spelling first and then your date of birth afterwards. I'll give you a moment to try that. A little bit easier, huh? Probably didn't take you quite as long. I'll come back and explain why this is relevant in a moment, so for now just keep it in the back of your mind. Tetris is the grandfather of puzzle games, and the fact that people are still playing it over 30 years after its inception is just a testament to how simple yet brilliant the game is at its core. But as titles age, it becomes difficult to keep an old formula fresh, and I think a lot of developers struggle to find ways to reinvent and modernize their IPs. Tetris is no stranger to this, and its latest entry in the series is about as modern as we can get right now. Tetris 99 is a puzzle battle royale game, which sounds ridiculous and is, but it's also incredible just how much fun it is to play this thing. One moment you're stacking Tetraminos, minding your own business, and the next you're Kate Winslet trudging through water to find Leonardo DiCaprio, except that the water is everyone else's junk pieces, and DiCaprio is the bottom of the board. I'll just wait here! The Battle Royale formula genuinely breathes new life into this old school puzzler for a multitude of reasons. Up front, after every round, the leaderboard provides immediate feedback on how much you've improved, if you've come closer to placing first. And that first place means there's a cap on how well you can do, which gives your mind a definite goal. Unlike previous entries in the genre, it's not about beating your old high score, which is some arbitrary number that you might later beat by 10 or 10,000. It's about chasing that sweet number one, where you know you beat all other 98 players. There is a win and a loss as opposed to a vaguely defined score. Also, since the Battle Royale formula is based on eliminations, it means you won't be playing one game for an absurdly long time before you win or are eliminated, so one round usually isn't a huge time commitment. These are some of the immediate changes that I've seen from spending a good chunk of time playing Tetris 99, but there is one implication of those changes that makes this Tetris new in a truly exciting way. When you boot up any traditional Tetris game, it's easy to slip into this zone of absolute concentration where it's just you and the board. But when you add in 98 other players, different attack modes, badges, and incoming junk pieces, suddenly things aren't so one-dimensional. You'll probably find yourself multitasking, working on clearing lines, trying to get knockouts, switching targets, or figuring out how many lines you need to clear to keep yourself from inheriting junk pieces. And there is a lot to love about games that force you to split your attention and divvy out your mental resources. Games like Oxygen Not Included and Frostpunk have you managing workers, resources, and even political climate to help your city or base survive. The decisions you make are interesting, but you have time to think them over. Overcooked, on the other hand, is a bit more up-tempo with its multitasking. Between preparing food, washing dishes, and putting out that inevitable grease fire, players are rapidly pulled in several different directions. And I think anyone who has played these games would agree that Overcooked is a much more frantic experience and something more akin to Tetris 99. Frostpunk gives you time to make decisions. Oxygen Not Included actually pauses the game when you open certain menus so that you can focus your attention, whereas Overcooked forces you to deal with whatever is right in front of you ASAP. And it's that urgency that makes 99 and Overcooked so much fun even though the decisions you make are less interesting than city builders and strategy games. It's stressful to make decisions quickly and jump from task to task on the fly, especially when you are trying to prevent an impending doom. And from a cognitive standpoint, the reason up-tempo multitasking like this is such a challenge is because multitasking is a myth. At least in the way most people think about it. Let me explain. Earlier when you spilled jewelry is shiny and wrote your date of birth on your hand, do you remember how much more easy it was to do each task separately as opposed to at the same time? This is because your prefrontal cortex has something called a central bottleneck, which filters all the information your brain perceives and only takes action on one thing at a time. So when you were quote unquote multitasking and trying to spell out loud and write your date of birth simultaneously, your mind was actually switching back and forth between the two in rapid succession. Even now, if you try to do it again, you'll probably find yourself spitting out a few letters, quickly hesitating, then writing some numbers, then pausing, then back to the letters, and so on. 
In reality, we really can only attend one thing at a time, which is why you genuinely should not text and drive. Tetris 99 and really any game that makes you switch between tasks quickly becomes difficult because of the central bottleneck. It's impossible to clear lines and check who's targeting you and decide if you should target them or see if you can find a better target all at the same time. Now you might think, hang on, I'm a veteran Tetris player. I can hit T-spins and rack up Tetrises in my sleep. I have no problem focusing on other players and picking my targets. Or maybe you've seen someone play like that. I know I certainly have, and as a 99 tryhard myself, watching that just makes me feel, frankly, victimized. But it's a great point to bring up, and I think I can explain it. If you think back to our original test, most people will likely do the spelling and date of birth back to back easier than if they try to do so at the same time. But why would doing them simultaneously take longer? The same amount of information is being spit out in both cases, even if switching back and forth rapidly is more difficult. So what gives? What you need to know is that each individual switch between tasks incurs a cost in the form of a hesitation or a delay. When your mind has to switch between two different types of tasks, it takes a moment to reset and recontextualize what it's going to do next. So switching back and forth rapidly creates several of these costs, delaying the finish time, whereas one switch in the middle causes a fraction of that delay. And this is why multitasking in the conventional sense doesn't work, and why most players new to Tetris 99 struggle with the added responsibility of selecting who to attack. Because each time the player thinks about switching targets based on who is attacking them or how their board looks, they are charged with that ever so slight hesitation that can be critical in the late game. It can make you drop a piece in the wrong spot or cost you precious time when you need to clear some lines ASAP. Now what's important to note here for veteran players is that this delay is flexible depending on your experience with each task. When one or more of the things you're doing is highly practiced, it's much easier for your mind to hop in and out of that context. In this video where I talked about automaticity, one of the common things brought up by the speedrunners I interviewed was that their minds wandered throughout their runs, and they often had no issues reading and responding to their chats mid-playing. Switching between interacting with the chat and playing at a high level was almost effortless, simply because of the amount of repetition that went into practicing their runs. Garth Sundom noted the same thing in his book, Your Daily Brain. If you can make cognitively demanding tasks less cognitively demanding, you'll pay a lower penalty when you combine them. By making any demanding task more automatic, you reduce its demands on your attention, and so have more attention for a second and third and fourth task. So for veteran Tetris players, the cost for switching between clearing lines and targeting other players is so incredibly small and undemanding that doing so is practically effortless. So if you want to play like the best, get good at classic Tetris first. Once it becomes highly automatic and practiced for you, splitting your attention between Tetris and the other 98 players will become much easier. I want to wrap up by saying that, for me at least, Tetris 99 plays like a fighting game. If you've ever taken Smash or Street Fighter seriously, you'll know that one of the best parts of playing is taking advantage of a missed attack or a whiffed block and punishing the opponent for their mistake with your own attack. Tetris 99 does that for me. When I get huge stacks of junk pieces, that just sets me up for a chance to clear several rows and sometimes several Tetrises back to back and shove those pieces right back in my opponent's face. The junk makes your life more difficult, but the gaps that are left in each row provide an opportunity for more experienced players to be rewarded. And man, it just feels so similar to dodging and following up with a big hit. Tetris 99 was after all developed by Arika, who has historically made fighting games, so maybe this feeling isn't a coincidence. Or maybe it is. But ultimately, I think Tetris 99 generously rewards players who take the time to master it on a technical and on a cognitive level. It sets players up for epic comebacks, has given birth to a whole new breed of memes, and constantly challenges you to push your mental limits. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you like what you saw, definitely give the video a like and consider subscribing. How high have you placed in Tetris 99? Have you noticed that mental hesitation when multitasking in a game before? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.